Okay, my good, wonderful friends, this is great. Jeffrey Zablotsky sent me, just tagged me here to come up and look at this thing, and it's talking about electrons. So I give him this picture, and I say, these are photons. All right, a photon is two electrons. So I, you know, of course I had looked at the post because it was about electrons. It says, this is Resonance Science Foundation. Now this is Nassim Harriman. And he's a very good researcher. He's got all kinds of stuff, and um, which I like. You know, that's very nice. And I, I follow everybody that is presenting evidence. And he presents evidence. Now, and he's also asking questions. And I have some answers that I'd like to be able to present to him. Now, he says, everyone knows what an electron is, right? Surprisingly, the answer is no. No one really knows what it is. I don't necessarily agree with that now. It says, if you ask any high school student what an electron is, they will most probably tell you there's a subatomic particle with a negative charge and acts as the primary carrier of electricity. Everybody's been told that. This answer is indeed correct, partially. However, it does not reveal the true nature of its reality. Totally agree. This fundamental question has been the deriving force for much of modern physics and eventually led to the development of quantum field theory, yet we are not any closer to finding an answer. I agree with that completely, because everything is made of a dipole. All right, now I'm going to show you my evidence. But I, I went to look up here uh, at his new site. This looks very, very intriguing. Resonance Science Foundation. Again, I, I believe, well, I'm pretty certain it's Nassim or Nassim Harriman. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'm sorry if I messed it up, my friend. But th that's him there. And they are going to be looking at some serious stuff. And it looks like he's got some pretty good looking toys there. <laughs> so, you know, what, what you need is somebody to stand behind you. And, you know, I have, I do a lot of research, but I don't have this kind of stuff, you know, and I don't have any fancy presentations or anything. I just, I'm a nuts and bolts guy. I'm what you call a simple scientist. But I do present evidence that supports the things I'm saying, like I will show you right now, which is the neutrinos and all of that stuff, which is exactly what they're looking for. Okay, so here we are. What is an electron? I'm going to leave it at this today very briefly and say, tell you exactly what an electron is. Light is a particle which is, in a, fo is a photon, and it consists of two electrons, just like two little bar magnets. One of them looks just like this, which is what we would always call an electron. However, this is the electron part. It's a glowy, pushy, shovey, radiant burner. This is like a bowling ball. There's no, it just, it's just there. It goes along with the electron. That's it. It's a carrier, they would call it. Now, I can show you this, and I will show you that we can actually separate the electron from the muon, and that is called a sterile muon. And, we will, and that happens after you get the electron showers. I will show you that right now. And my theory of electron flood theory, which is everything's made of dipoles, is that a proton is actually 1839 of these electrons. That means it leaves it one short of being neutral, which is a neutron. 1840 is a neutron. 1839 is a proton. Simple as that. If you have 1839, you have a positive core that would like to have one more to bring it up to neutral. And the hydrogen is right in that range and it is so volatile that all you have to do is throw another electron or two in there, boom, and they all go. That's why hydrogen is so explosive. I'm going to get very, very deep into this, but I'm going to show you right now the muons and the electrons and answer Nassim's question. And I would love to engage in this new research because they are doing a fabulous job. He's got some serious stuff going on here. And I'd like to get in the middle of some of this stuff, but I'm having a hard time penetrating. Now, a lot of people just aren't aware that you can use smartphones as cosmic ray detectors, and they also work as extremely high energy particle detectors which is what we are using them for. And uh, it says it basically transferred the phone to a high energy particle detector. 
and uh, use the same principles, very large experiments, high-end multi-million dollar observatories, using the same thing, looking for cosmic rays. Well, cosmic rays to them are something that slams into the atmosphere. For us, a cosmic ray is an accelerated light particle that slams and splits because it gives off muons. And that's what they're looking for, cosmic rays uh, where's the thing about the muons? Well, all right, here's right here. Smartphone cameras use a silicon chip, which is a CMOS. It, the work through what is called the photoelectric effect, in which particles of light, which are photons, which I showed you or will, hit a silicon surface, release electric charge. Because they are electric particle. Bam! they got to push something else out of the way. The same is true for muons. Now, they have to be high enough energy to push them. That's the key. When a muon strikes a semiconductor that underpins a smartphone camera, it liberates an electric charge in an extremely high energy range and creates a signature in pixels and can be logged, stored, and analyzed. That's what we did, and here, here it is. All right, this was a pulse red laser. That's all it is, is pulse red laser. And this is the same pulse red laser, but now we're feeding it into a Venturi, which is nothing more than a, uh, an accelerator. It's, a, it's, it's the same thing they use uh, to atomize gas in the old carburetors. And um, what it does, it's, it's just, it almost like a nozzle on a hose. Of a, uh, on a hose. It forces this particle, which is the leading tip of the wave, is where the particle is. All of this is concussion effect from the particle having its magnetic field. Well now it's being forced to drag itself out and concuss here. And that particle just before it explodes is this particle right here, which is two electrons. Electron here and electron here, back and forth. One side is charging up, the other side is discharging. That side had charged up, and then this side is discharging. That's the same uh, 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 photon. It's just had flipped. It made its flip. Um, hold on one second. All right, now let's look at it in a little more detail. Here it looks like just the same two whites and two blacks. They're both all the same, but they're not. The black ones are absolutely. They do not change whatsoever. They don't. They don't reflect. They don't emit. They don't absorb, and they do not. Concuss, I mean um, compress. The white ones do all of those things. They emit, they absorb, which they're absorbing energy from the forward motion. They are emitting energy, glowing. They're reflecting, and they are also compressible and decompressible. And that is the only reason the white ones can get through the Venturi, because we tuned it so it was just this big. And the white ones can squirt through, and the black ones will go bang, and they bounce back, bang, boom, bang, boom, and they can't go through. That's how we designed the Venturi. Now, I'm going to show you some videos in a minute from the, the Department of Energy and these kind of people that do this research. This is a muon neutrino. This is an electron neutrino. They were attached back to back, a black and a white ball. When they hit the Cheryankov radiation stage, the muon did not change. That's the black ball right there. Did not change. The white ball went into a shower mode exactly there. This, as I will show you, is fission. This is fusion. This was done with a red laser and a smartphone. You saw the particles divide the black and the white ball. This is where they were stuck together in the photon phase. All right, you see the black and white ball together, black and white ball together, one's up and one's down. That's because they're just exactly like two biomagnets. And each one of them is what we would always have thought was an electron. But we never knew about the dark matter. Nobody's ever seen it before because in light, it's just attached to light. And when they, they see these big particle collisions and so forth, they use tons and tons of particles. So all they're digging through is like a pile of trash. So they see the particles. And they call them muon neutrino, electron neutrino, yes. But they have no idea where they came from. We see them coming from the red laser right here. They, that's where the red laser is. It's a pulse red laser. 
it is concussing everything in front of it. That's why these little glowy particles are glowing, because their electrons are being concussed by this wave. And it is a magnetic wave. It is not just the particle. The particles here, we're seeing the concussion way out here. The same thing that they see in an atomic bomb they don't understand. Why is this concussing way out here? Because the particles back here, the mag magnetism is, is in front of it. It controls a gigantic wave of magnetism. So that's why we see these glowing instead of being totally dark. When we go into a phase like this where they start accelerating, up here you don't see anything at all. It's totally, absolutely black. And the reason is, is because all, all this can pick up is high energy radiation, which is right there. And that's the red blazer now is accelerating. And if you can't tell that's acceleration, then I, I think you've got to open your mind a little wider. That wave, which was the particle, sit right there, created interference way out here with the glowy little particles, these particles here. But then because we put it through a Venturi, it had to accelerate. And it's a, identical to a hose with a nozzle. <laughs> that's all it is. Basically, that's all it is. And what we made that nozzle so perfectly tuned that the only thing it would let through was the white, because the white is squishy. The black is not squishy. And I'm going to show you this in extreme detail. And the black is a muon neutrino, the white is the electron neutrino. The white causes electron showers, the black just never changes and goes around and combines back here. Don't forget these interference patterns. You're going to see these again. And they're not, they, we only have a single slit, so it has nothing to do with a wave flapping here and a wave flapping there. That was all nonsense. The dual slit experiment is not correct whatsoever. A single slit is this. And the reason these are, are going into these patterns here is because, first of all, the particle is spinning. Some spin this way, some spin over the top and go that way. I will show you this in extreme detail. And secondly, the white parts don't want to be next to each other. So they start to separate in, in lines and say, you stay away, you stay away, you stay away, you stay away. And that's why you get these interference patterns. Interference means repulsion. Get away, you get away, you get away, you get away, you get away. And then zzzz, and that's why you get these. You can see they don't want to be next to each other. It's quite obvious. <laughs> now, as the black ones start to reintegrate with them, they become back to just nothing more than particles of light or electrons. But they, they do fuse back together. So f fission here, fusion here. Don't forget, this is like instantaneously after it went off. All the white ones are gone. All you have back in here is the dark matter. And then all the white ones will come back in and crush it again. And then there's another explosion. Watch. Absolutely enormous explosion. Watch. All right. Now the, they'll come back in and it turns really boom. Now the second time it comes out, now we've got all kinds of a major shock wave coming because this time it's not just the white particles, it's all the particles. And that's when you get a real secondary concussion. All right, these are atomic bomb blasts where they take checking out how it affects houses. The first thing is the radiation hits, which is strictly the electrons, and they have no mass. They burn like hell. And then the next thing is the explosion, and then everything comes back, because the dark matter wants to pull back. It's gravity, and the dark matter is now all by itself. Here it goes. Boom. Now watch. Boom. Here it comes. Everything comes back. Now this one here is closer. Now see this thing? Burn up, all of that stuff burning, burn, 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 bam, now everything comes back. That's my claim, is the only way that can happen is the first thing that hits is something that has no real mass. It just burns. And then, boom, the mass comes.